everyone, this is Alex Flurry with Real World Endo, and I got something interesting to share with you here today. It's a clinical observation we've been seeing uh, lately when uh, after we started using the bioceramic sealer uh, obturation that I'd like to share with you today. See, you, you remember when when a tooth is not restored, see this is a beautiful root canal treatment here that was done uh, with this, uh, this particular case was done with thermophil. When these teeth are open to the mouth for even a, a day or two, there is significant leakage around uh, the gutta perch and the sealer there to actually kill your case. You have to go back in and retreat it even after a few days. So uh, this is what we typically have been seeing uh, in cases that were never restored. You see this large lesion there. Here's another example. This is leakage through gutta percha. This was a, a warm vertigo gutta percha condensation case. Nicely done, too. And because the tooth has been open to the mouth, uh, you came back in. A, you come back in a few months to see apical periodontitis where there wasn't apical periodontitis. So the gutta percha and sealer alone, classically, we've known this. They're not able to hold coronal leakage. So if this is exposed to the mouth, case needs to be retreated. It. And I just want to share what we've been looking at, uh, and I want to emphasize, and this is clinical observation. There's no science here. Just uh, we've just seen this. Look at this case here. This this was treated. Uh, this case, patient came in with apical periodontitis. Uh, I've done my best possible job that I could there and send the patient on the way she was going to have that bridge replaced and she went to the general dentist had that bridge partially removed and for some reason I don't know lack of money or time or both she ended up not having it done right away so doctor sends the patient back to me and says Alex I can't I mean should I retreat this I see the lesion is completely gone but this is exposed to the mouth you actually are looking at got a percha clinically so I can't recommend at this date that you don't retreat it. I think it's a good idea to retreat. I'm sure there's some leakage there, but I want you to observe this is there's not enough leakage to sustain apical periodontitis. So this is a kind of seal you get with this uh, bioceramic obturation, this monoblock obturation with, uh, with a gutta percha line with a bioceramic sealer. I think it's a pretty tight seal. And we see this consistently. This is a case from my, my friend, Dr. Yogesh Patel. He've done a beautiful Beautiful job in the root canal there and this uh, lower molar patient comes back uh, 26 months for another treatment the tooth was never restored the, the coronal portion is completely gone but you look there's no apical periodontitis it's healed so again it's an important clinical observation there's not enough leakage to sustain apical periodontitis here's another example this is my patient uh, one of my earliest cases with a bioceramic sealer first year we started using it and there was no apical periodontitis there to start with I've done a root canal treatment there on the second mandibular molar and and she came back for root canal treatment on 19 and at this point the crown a coronal portion of uh, I'm sorry, 30, the coronal portion of 31 is completely gone. And here, of course, there is leakage, but it's not enough leakage to allow apical periodontitis. Here's another case with a six months follow-up. This case was done and had a cotton pellet, an IRM. You know what IRM looks like after a few weeks in function, right? Eating food, normal, regular food. It doesn't look pretty. This is six months later. There is obvious leakage in this IRM here, but it's not enough to sustain apical periodontitis. Here's another case, same scenario, done the root canal treatment in a tooth with apical periodontitis, necrotic pulp and apical periodontitis. Got a cotton pellet in uh, and, and uh, IRM. This patient was going to have that crown replaced. She comes back six years later. She actually came back for another tooth. It's not even that tooth, the tooth that's bothering her. And I shoot a follow-up x-ray. The apical periodontitis is completely gone. Again, folks, these are clinical observations. Maybe in the future we'll be able to write this down as science. Uh, for now, it stays as a clinical observation, but a cool one. All right, thanks for listening. This has been Alex Flurry with Real World Endo.